gotten considerably more prominence than the other, no one at Tynecastle would consider their defeat at Dunfermline to be any less damaging than Rangers was in Zurich. There was no hint of the drama to come as we joined Jock Brown just before kickoff. Rangers make one significant change from the side which lost to Grasshoppers of Zurich in midweek. Striker Ali McCoy's drops to the bench and Derek McInnes wears his number nine, although he's a midfield man by trade. Otherwise, it's a vote of confidence for the men who failed in Europe. And this is McInnes's eighth Premier Division start for Rangers after his budget price transfer from Morton at the end of last year. Well, the 25-year-old had already made himself a firm favourite among Irish fans for his all-action style in the middle of the field. Jim Jeffries signed no fewer than seven of that Hearts team since taking over at Tyne Castle just 14 months ago. And that shows how quickly things change in football. There's no place for Darren Beckford up front. The 29-year-old Stefano Salvatore, ex-AC Milan, starts his first match in midfield. And there's an opportunity here for goalkeeper Gilles Rousset to cast aside the nightmare of his last match against Rangers in the Tenet Scottish Cup final in May when he allowed Brian Loudrup's cross to slip through his legs for Rangers' second goal in that 5-1 defeat. The experienced referee is Mr Jerry Evans from Bishop Briggs. Well, this will be a fascinating tactical battle because both sides last season seemed to profit from sucking in the opposition and striking on the break. On that basis, Hearts won twice in league matches, once here at Ibrooks by three goals to nil in January and then later at Tynecastle by two goals to nil that offset comfortable wins for Rangers earlier in the season by 4-1 at Ibrooks and 2-0 at Tynecastle so it will be very interesting to see how the sides go about their business Rangers certainly by their team selection suggest they may well be playing a containing game hitting on the break only Gordon Jury uh, an out, an out striking up front they'll be supported by Loudrup Archie Ox there with David Dodds. Gas going the centre of the field against Salvatore. And there's Bruno's first tackle on Moira. Well, very well versed in the man marking talents, Bruno. And there he is, straight in behind Loudra. Well, 10 star for Jim Jeffries and Billy Brown, the Hearts management team. Paul Hegarty also there, the coaching staff. there again from Jury. Attacking on the back was by Goff on Robertson. Plenty of space here now for David Weir who scored against Dunfermline in the midweek. That's for Robertson. Back it goes to Weir. Good save by Gorham. And Rangers will open up very easily indeed there. It was a very simple move. David Weir playing the one two there with John Robertson wasn't picked up on the run. A very good effort, well saved by Gorham. Good first and Jury of a battle. Jury gets the ball and Tess Russe. He'll be very happy at that first save behind him. Took that confidently to the keeper. Jury in the better that tussle with McPherson. Hit this. Powerful enough, should have been easy for the keeper, but he'll be happy to have that one behind him. And down goes Loudrup again, the culprit was Bruno. Offering an apology there to Loudrup. I wonder how many more the referee will allow. That's two hefty tackles in the early stages. I'm sure Loudrup will just keep on running at Bruno and invite more tackles like that until the yellow card comes out. Pass from McInnes to Gascoigne, but it's given away. Judy again, the target for the ball up front. Very powerful indeed to hold off McPherson. This is Alberts. Tackled well by Ritchie. Now it's Gascoigne. Loudrop has found some space away from Bruno, now he wants to attack the Italian. Down he goes again. Well, the treatment really is very severe indeed, and Bruno will be in trouble this time. It's foul number three. And a yellow card, now that will make life very difficult for him. Well, the jersey pulled back there by Bruno, that was the problem. 
Well, now he's got a very long time. He's got 80 minutes to survive without a second yellow card. Robertson to McCann. Salvatore on his right-hand side. No way through there, straight through the middle of McCann. He had options to the left and to the right. And the referee has shown the yellow card there to McInnes. The little kick after the ball had gone. And it's a free kick to Hearts. That's bad news for McInnes too, who's been certainly very much involved in these opening stages. You see why here, there was McCann getting away from McInnes. The pass was released, the tackle came in late. That was the offence, that lingering leg. Now Salvatore is capable of a very powerful shot from this position. It's a long way out against Gona, mind you. Very ambitious. I'm sure that uh, Stefano Salvatore knows all about Gorham's prowess in shot stopping terms. Certainly got it wide of the wall, but it was no threat to Gorham. It's good play between McCall and Gascoigne. Space for McInnes. McCall wants the ball played forward. Julie also looking for an angle. McInnes did well to get the shot in. Jose falling safely to make the save, but it was strong, skillful play by McInnes. Petric towering above his opponent there. Bakula gives possession to Alec Clellan. The bad ball that by Bruno. There's Albert. Very close. Well, Pasquale Bruno with the most relieved hearts player in the field. It was his careless back killer here which set up the opportunity for Clellan to play the ball across the face of the goal. Alberts coming from a deep position in space for this first time shot at goal. And Roussi relieved to see it wide. McCann did well, timing the leap ahead of Petric. Petric a full stretch again. A good tackle to deny McCann possession. Well, Rangers settling into a passing rhythm now. Well, the dummy certainly beat Bruno. Possession remains with Rangers in the form of the throw. Golf the load up. There's Gascoigne. Salvatore still in possession. That's for Alberts. He's onside. No, he's offside. It's chopped off. It won't count. John McBride, the linesman, had the flag up. The assistant referee, rather. Delicate ball played through here by Gasco, and it must have been very, very close indeed. Whipped in superbly by Alberts. Well, there was Gasco in away from Salvatore, and Alberts. Very tight indeed, perhaps half a yard only. Here's McInnes. Alberts. Goff makes the run. Met by his former teammate, Dave McPherson. Goff goes back to his defensive position, taking advantage of the fact that Hearts are playing just two men up, Robertson and McCann. Joining the attack when he can. Oh, that's great play by Loudrop. Here's Alberts. Great effort by Alberts. And that was his weaker foot. What a shot it was by Jorg Alberts. Goffs in the area against McPherson, against Weir rather, is his regular marker. Well, Rangers so unlucky there. That was a terrific effort by Alberts. Thinking that. And a half volley there, and Rusi was certainly beaten. Now McCall in that deep position in midfield. Gascoigne much further forward, getting away from Salvatore. Away from Mackay. Trying to do it all by himself. The save was made by Rusi, but it was Gascoigne that is vintage best. 
wonderful midfield play this jumping tackle by Salvador he was lucky he didn't make contact I mean booked already it's just no way through you would think but Gascoigne tests Russe with that excellent effort strong defending by McPherson that time Salvatore to Weir McCann to Salvatore back it goes to McCann who's onside chance to run it gone Good play by McCann. Well, he looks full of confidence this afternoon, this young man. Seeing plenty of the ball and looking better and better as the game goes on. Checking inside Richard Goff here on his strong left foot. Gascoigne now to McCall. Off goes Laudrup against Bruno, who timed the tackle well again. That's good play, McCall played it in. What a goal by Jury. Inspired play by Rangers. From the set piece. Hearts were caught napping. Loader with a short corner. McCall deserves enormous credit for being there. But how about this for a finish from Gordon Jury? Remarkably, his first goal of the season. 39 minutes gone. Thundered home with the left foot. And Hearts were totally at sea. Great play by Jury. Strong play by McInnes in midfield. Caught late by Poynton. He'll be in trouble for that. Well, the third Hearts player to be booked in the match. No complaint. He was late and reckless with this one. Very late indeed. This is Gascoigne. Interception by Bruno. And it turns towards Jury. He was caught there. Bruno and Jury exchanging pleasantries there. The referee kept an eye on that. Paul Ritchie has words with the Italian, telling him to calm down. Remarkable that. Yellow card already. He wants to turn in some kind of altercation with Jury. Mackay. Well read by Goff. The call to Gascoigne. Richard Goff on the right hand side. Loads up ahead of him. May go himself here. Finished up to be a very good chance there for Goff. Well timed pass by Gascoigne, giving Goff all the time in the world with Loudrup's decoy run creating space for the shot. Tori stepping in, but it breaks to Alberts. McCall, very awkward one for him to control there. Kept in by Jury. Goff, he hit the post. Low drop. Well tackled by Bruno. The Hearts once again in total disarray. Trying to let the ball run down for the goal kick and Gordon Jury kept it in, worked his way back inside. Set up Richard Goff for the chance, but cannon back off the post. But it's Jury who's got a hat trick in the cup final against Hearts, who's enjoyed playing against them again this afternoon with a splendid opening goal in 39 minutes. And Rangers, excellent value for the lead at half time. Richard Goff could have made it too, but at half time, as Rangers won, Hearts nil. manager with the greater problems at half time obviously was Jim Jeffries watching his side really going through a little bit of a tough time in that first half only one down but when you think of Albert sitting at post and having a goal chopped off and Richard Goff hitting the post it could have been so much worse for Hart so reasonable I think to look for some alteration in their approach to the second half for Walter Smith I think a question of more of the same would do with some better finishing Petrich, very commanding in the air at the back for Rangers. Bruno lets that go. And Richie was concerned, I think, about any contact with Jury. Loads up still going forward, but it won't count because the whistle has gone. Now, Pasquale Bruno is ordered off. Bruno is ordered off. A second yellow card. Well, really, you know, it was almost. 
almost inevitable. His first three challenges of the match were all fouls. That bit a yellow card in ten minutes. And really, the smiling reaction, I think, does him less than credit. He's let his team down, there's no doubt about that. And yet, he sees fit to smile and applaud to the crowd. Now, half's down to ten men. We're just a minute into the second half. And an act of folly completely here. There was Gordon Jury quite clearly pulled back by Bruno as he broke into the space. Well, Jim Jeffries is on the track immediately, passing instructions through John Robertson to his players. But he really could have anticipated that. And I, you know, I wonder, in fact, after <laughs> 10 minutes whether they might take Bruno off to avoid him being sent off, as has now happened. Perhaps he was depending on the Italians' vast experience to keep him on the field, but that didn't work. And now a low drop without his shadow. Gascoigne getting away from Weir. Gascoigne again, taking all the time in the world to score. Number two. Well, he showed all the composure, all the skill, enough pace. Patience, all the attributes you could want to make it 2-0 to Rangers. So we're three minutes into the second half. David Weir tried to bring him down outside the area, couldn't manage that. Gilles Rousset was taken out of the play by a neat sidestep. And then the ball was lashed home. Third of the season for Gascoigne. Another excellent goal. Few better in that position, attacking defender, attacking goalkeepers. Excellent play from Gascoigne. Well, now, Hearts, I think, are now concerned about a real drubbing here because there are ten men, now two goals behind. They must, I think, feel the task of saving the game is beyond them. Unless they really have superhuman qualities. Salvatore getting quickly to Gascoigne this time. He lost him initially. Here's Neil McCann now with a decent chance. Swallowed up by Gorham. Never a hit of an error there from Gorham. Good pass it was from Salvatore, and there was space there for McCann to exploit. There's McCann. Cameron. Yeah. Away by Bjorklund. Gascoigne. Not allowed to. Alberts on the left. Judy going through the middle. Cleland on the right hand side. Here's Judy. Rousse made the block but couldn't hold it. Well, Judy's run picked out superbly by Lauder. The pass timed to perfection. You see the, pa the pace of the pass here made the shooting chance on for Judy first time. Skillful, very powerful and pacey. That's one for Judy. Richie goes across. Alberts getting a huge round of applause there. Goff to Loudra. Judy's offside. Very tight indeed. May have been in line. That was very close. Space now for Cameron. Dangerous for Rangers to take the foot off the gas and allow Hearts back into the match. McCann has performed very well indeed for Hearts. Here he goes again. Stopped by Goff the first time. Robertson. For Mackay. The handball appeal there against McCall. The Hearts supporters behind Andy Gordon rising in one there to claim the penalty fouled by Judy Judy and David Weir exchange a few words there well this is just tear total folly I mean we're talking here of an experienced professional player all would become involved in that a red card for David Weir And Rousset coming after Julia. Now, this is equally foolish. I mean, this is incredibly stupid stuff. 
Well, the harsh discipline is in tatters here as David Weir makes the lonely walk off. Well, it really was very sick. Clear foul there by Julian McPherson, no doubt about that. Then Weir took the ball away. Now, let's see the tangle here which caused the problem. It was a backhander there on Jury. That was the problem. Then the smile. What these smiles are about, I really don't know in these circumstances. An exchange there. Nine men now, Hearts. Here's McCann. Salvatore. Robertson to Mackay. Albert steals the ball, company with there, and then sets off. That's a good pass. Here's McCall. Jury on the outside. He's onside. Turned away by Poynton. Poynton complaining about offside. What's this all about? I mean, Hearts have lost the place. This is just incredible stuff here. And the linesman wants action taken against Poynton. That's for sure now. That outburst of dissent cannot be accepted by the assistant referee. And this is not a very healthy situation now altogether. Graham Allison, a grade one referee, explaining to Jerry Evans what's happened. And there's going to be trouble for Poynton. Of that, there can be no doubt at all. Dave McPherson to the cross with a bit of applause, sarcastic applause. Now, what's going to happen to him? This is just madness. Yellow card for Poynton and a red card. He's been booked already, you see. He's been booked already. But a volley of dissent towards the linesman or the assistant referee. John Robertson could get himself in trouble too. Hearts have a serious problem here. They have to get to grips quickly. Jim Jeffries comes to the touchline. He wants to speak to the assistant referee who's involved. He's invited back to the dugout. Now he will have to control himself as Poynton now makes his way back. It was clear descent towards the assistant referee, having been booked already. So he's another very experienced professional making the long walk off. Discipline is now required by Hearts. It's a question of saving some pride here. And that means good discipline and very tough defending. Well, it's not actually a picnic this for Rangers now either, playing against eight men. They've got to adjust a lot of things in their approach. Misunderstanding, Fergus and Cullen thought each other was going for the ball. Certainly has no concerns about losing the points or any points here this afternoon at this point. But now the assistant referee is now drawing the referee across again. So here's more trouble. Who is it this time? Who is it this time? Well, now, it appears to be Paul Ritchie. Richard Goff tried to calm down the Hearts players, but Paul Ritchie is in trouble. Something happening off the ball. It is a red card for Ritchie. Well, and now down to seven. Paul Ritchie goes off, Graham Allison from the Dumfries, the assistant referee, has drawn the attention of the referee to yet another incident. Gilles Rousset wants an explanation, he's not going to get one. Richard Goff is doing all he can to calm the situation down, but I think if one more player is ordered off, the game must stop. Well, I've never seen anything like this in my life. This is quite incredible. Chris Robinson, the chairman of Hearts, is down in the track, and he wants the game stopped, I think. Well, now, this could have serious repercussions. It really could. There's Chris Robinson talking to Jim Jeffries. 
Now it looks as though he wants the players to come off, the Hearts players to come off, and if he does that, I think there will be very serious trouble. Chris Robinson now trying to be escorted away. Another official there with him, trying to suggest he should leave. Police down the track as well. Well, Rangers, I suspect, will now just want to see this game out calmly, just pass the ball around. And whether they scored more goals or not really is of no consequence, I would suggest. Chris Robinson down made his way up the tunnel. Now remember there are rules for the number of people who can be in the technical area. A total of eight. And I think that might well have made a nine, so that's an offence perhaps as well, technically. The call is offside. Broussier comes out for the challenge. So 11 against 7. The Hearts board there. Chris Robinson with Les Porteous, the secretary, in the director's box. Hearts chairman clearly very disturbed at these events. Taking a knock here as Rangers in possession again, and Ian Ferguson stands on the ball, stumbles. Here's Callum now. The call inside, Van Boston on the run. Across it comes here, McCoy retrieves. He'll want a shot at goal, you can be sure of that. And it's goal number three. Never a possibility of him passing the ball in that position. 81 minutes gone, 3-0 to Rangers. Stepping away from Frail, drilling the ball at the far post. Good goal, actually, getting away from Stephen Frail the way he did. Beating Rousset, the corner. Well, they know the cause is lost. The heart's dug out there. Gascoigne again, on the far side is Van Vossen. Alberts, McCoist, Rusi did so well there, stealing that away from Gordon Jury. Well, how he survived, I'm sure he scarcely knows that. Well, it really was good play, Alberts playing it in, McCoist attempting the first time, so that's a good block. Jury tried to walk it past the keeper who stretched there to make the stop. Hearts want to make another substitution to last. Ian Ferguson with Pellin outside him. In the gap goes Van Vossen. Well, that's fine play. <laughs> Couldn't hit the target. The angle was very tight. Good angle ball through the inside right channel. Of course, the marking very difficult with so few players. So now, here's the angle. Should really have made it from that distance. Ferguson to Bjorklund. Alberts. Van Vossen on the left. Jury through the middle of McCoist. Here's Van Vossen. Trying to keep the tempo of the game up, Van Vossen. Rather obvious, the pass intended for Gascoigne. The referee brings the game to a halt. It's a game which will be remembered for all the wrong reasons. For the loss of discipline on the part of Hearts in the second half. Jim Jeffries will be concerned about that. And I think Pasquale Bruno's initial opening off was a huge problem. That's what set the tone in the second half. For Hearts to lose four players by the midway point in the second half. Jerry Evans was the man who had to make all the tough decisions on the advice, it may be said, at least two occasions of the linesman, Graham Allison. Richard Goff goes across to shake his hand, a shrug of the shoulders, a philosophical view taken by the Rangers captain, he did all he could to calm things down at the heart's end. It's almost incidental in a sense that the points go to Rangers who won comfortably enough by three goals to nil. The game was won while it was 11 aside, there's no argument about that, but the repercussions of this match will be felt for some time. 
Hearts ending the match with only seven players. The final score, as if that was a real story, Rangers three, Hearts nil. Yes, a quite astonishing afternoon at Ibrox. Only the second time in Scottish football.